welcome back. In the last two videos, we will look at techniques from AI. These techniques do learn from data, but they don't fit neatly into machine learning categories of supervised or unsupervised. In this video, we'll look at Bayesian networks, also called belief networks. A Bayesian network is a directed acyclic graph. Here we see one on the air quality data. The arrows show the conditional dependencies. Ozone is conditioned on both temperature and wind. Ozone is the parent node. Notice that there is no link between temp and wind, meaning that the algorithm didn't find a strong relationship between these two variables. Each node represents a random variable. All this network is saying is that ozone is conditionally dependent on both temperature and wind. These conditional probabilities are learned from the data. Keep in mind that the network is not saying anything about causation. I'm going to show the BN learn package in R. There are some Python packages I've taken a look at, but I haven't found one that I really like. Let's look at a couple of examples of building a BayesNet using our package BNLearn. First, we'll look at the default data set in package ISLR. First, I needed to convert it to a data frame. Let's look at the structure of this. And we see we have 10,000 observations. We have four variables, whether or not the person defaulted, whether or not the person is a student, how much credit card or debt balance they have, and their income. And then we use the hill climbing algorithm in package B and learn. This does the actual learning. And finally, we plot our results. So this is telling us that whether or not a person defaulted is conditioned on how much their outstanding balance is, as well as if they're a student. And notice that whether or not you're a student is conditioned on the income that you have. Let's look at the parameters and we see that most people do not default. Very small percentage here uh, defaults. This doesn't concern us too much. We're not doing any supervised learning here. One of the nice things about this package is that you can query with CP query, query the network after you've built it. I want to query about the event where a person did default and they were a student. And we see that students actually don't default that much, just 0 0.035. Let's look at the event that a person defaulted and their balance was over 1,200. That's a little bit higher, close to 14%. And then we can combine those with their student and balance over 1,200. All right, next let's look at the Titanic data since we're very familiar with it. I subsetted it to be just a small portion of the data. Uh, just these four variables that we're very familiar with, survive, passenger class, sex, and age. And I got rid of any rows that had NAs in them. So again, build the network and plot it. And we see that whether or not a person survived is conditioned on all three of these other variables, their age, their sex, and their passenger class. I'm not sure this link in the network makes sense, that passenger class is conditioned on sex, but I suppose it's possible that more of passenger class three, for example, might have been males coming to America to work. I'm not sure I'd have to dig into the data to look at that. Let's print out our parameters and see that we get very Bayesian. This looks very familiar from Naive Bayes' uh, work. We get very familiar kinds of probabilities that were learned from this data. And again, let's make a few queries. The event being, in all of these cases, that the person survived. If they're in passenger class 1, very high probability. If they're a child, also fairly high. If they're both passenger class one and a child, 
very high, 0 0.8. This one is passenger class 1 and older than 9. Female, 0.758. And adult male, uh, very low, 0.1829. This is a hypothetical Bayesian network that I created in a graphics program just to illustrate some concepts. We have five random variables, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, family history, unhealthy lifestyle, elevated blood sugar, and excessive thirst. There are four directed arcs. In Bayesian networks, all arcs will be directed, and there cannot be cycles. If two variables are independent, there will be no arc connecting them. Conditional independence is specified by the direction separation criterion, called D-separation. The intuition behind D-separation is that, for example, there's, there's no direct path between F and S that does not go through D. So D is said to D-separate F and S. The Markov property is also at play here, and that shows that we only look at parent nodes. For example, we can look at excessive thirst as being conditioned on diabetes, not unhealthy lifestyle or family history. It also means that the probability of thirst given diabetes and unhealthy lifestyle is the same as the probability of thirst given diabetes. In other words, we only go back one level. Let's quickly look at another data set, uh, the coronary data set which has the variables, all binary variables, smoking, whether you have mentally strenuous or physically strenuous work, if your pressure is high or low, some proteins, and family history. So first we'll load in the data and build the network. So whether or not a person smoked uh, is conditioned, that can be determined conditionally from proteins, their blood pressure, physically strenuous work. There's some links that make sense, such as proteins be affected by smoking and mentally stressful work. There are other links that don't seem to make a lot of sense, such as family being a child of mentally challenging work. One of the nice things about this package is that we can delete an arc, so you can inject some domain knowledge I'm just showing this as an example. It could be that that was an important link to leave in. With the FIT method, we can learn the conditional probability tables and print those out. And then we're ready to do some inference. The probability that your proteins are low, given that you don't smoke, is pretty high. What's the chance that a non-smoker uh, with blood pressure has low protein levels? Again, pretty high. And we can also move in the opposite direction of an arc. So let's say that their protein levels are low. What's the probability that their blood pressure is high? So how did this learn? The algorithm uses a hill climbing algorithm. Uh, this is a widespread algorithm in AI. In simple hill climbing for Bayesian networks, we start with an empty graph. Each variable in the data is evaluated by a score function that quantifies how well the network with the added node would fit the data. So it's a greedy search through the variables, each time, each iteration, adding variable based on the highest score. And there are many variations of this hill climbing algorithm. One variation is called taboo search, which is constraint based. And at each iteration, it searches through the next best variables that it has not recently visited, that are not on the taboo list. The term Bayesian network was coined by Judea Pearl in 1985 to emphasize the Bayesian conditioning. Judea Pearl was the 2011 winner of the ACM Turing Award. One of the nice things about Bayesian networks is that they're very interpretable. Bayesian networks have been getting renewed interest in recent years. The techniques that we discuss can be combined with deep learning to make some truly unique learning models.